Hi, I'm Nathan Standen, and I serve as the Congregational Excellence Director. Hi, my name is Melissa Getford, and I serve as the Intergenerational Discipleship Coordinator. Hi, I'm Shane Warda, and I serve as Coordinator of Lay Leadership Development. Hi, I'm Nicole Connard, and I serve as the Campus Ministry and Young Adults Coordinator. Hi, I'm Holly Tapley, and I serve as the Disaster Response Coordinator. Hi, my name is Kalabai Chali. I serve as the Mercy and Justice Coordinator. Hi, I am Sarah Shaw, and I serve as the Camping Ministries Coordinator for the Great Plains Conference. Greetings. We are delighted to be here with you today. I am the Reverend Dr. Nancy Tomlinson, Superintendent of the Blue River District and the central portion of the Elkhorn Valley District. And I am the Reverend Lance Clay, Superintendent of the Prairie Rivers District and the western portion of the Elkhorn Valley District. We know this has been an extremely challenging six months. The COVID-19 pandemic brought unprecedented challenges to our lives and to our churches. You have done critical adaptive work in this time to bring the light and hope of Christ to our communities and our world. And being with us today shows your continued commitment to this work. Thank you. The Great Plains Annual Conference is committed to providing us all with resources as we seek to serve Christ by making new disciples and in the process, transforming our world. Today, we are introducing you to the Congregational Excellence Team. We want to offer our thanks to Reverend Nathan Stanton and his team for their excellent work in helping us to resource all of our churches and create today's event to introduce you to the breadth of resources available at no cost to our churches. This group of dedicated clergy and lay people accept the challenge of developing and disseminating resources of many kinds and sizes to congregationals, large and small. No doubt some of the information shared here today will not be new to you, but we believe some of this information will be new. And as you learn about these resources and commitments at the conference level, we hope they show support for you as you continue to work in ministry. Hi, I'm Nathan Standen, and I serve as the Congregational Excellence Director, as well as Director of Connectional Ministries for the Great Plains. I also serve as the point person for new church development for the conference. And together, we make up the Congregational Excellence Team of the Great Plains Conference. We are on the adventure to resource the Great Plains mission field by identifying, stewarding, and deploying resources to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Together with the rest of the Great Plains Conference staff, we are responsible for developing great churches, great leaders, and great disciples in Kansas and Nebraska. If you are interested in reaching new people, helping your congregations grow deeper and making a difference in your community, we invite you to reach out to your 
district superintendent first to see how we can help you as director of congregational excellence and connectional ministries my leadership is primarily focused on stewarding the vision of the great plans including the development clarification interpretation and embodiment of the vision of the Great Plains. This past year, Connecting Council approved the Greatness Profiles to help every size church reflect on their current and future vitality to serve as leader of the continuous process of transformation and renewal necessary for the annual conference to be faithful to our Christian identity in a changing world to ensure in alignment of the total resources of the conference to its mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world in Kansas and Nebraska and to ensure the connections among the local church networks, district, annual conference, and general church ministries for the purpose of networking, resourcing, and communicating their shared ministry. As we continue to adjust, pivot, and adapt to the new reality we are living in and living through, I'd like to share priorities of the congregational excellence and the new church development born. Each team member you'll hear from will share with you why and how you and your church may continue to reach the key stakeholders in your mission field, those who are not yet part of the church or who may have fallen away or been hurt by the church in the past. Every member of the Congregational Excellence Team is equipped to support the DS of the district they have been assigned to by resourcing the strategy teams and ensuring every network and church is engaging in processes for the transformation of the world. We know that the Holy Spirit will do its mighty work when we work together. In the upcoming segments, you will hear about the important work of alleviating immediate suffering through acts of mercy and disrupting and transforming unjust systems of oppression of God's people everywhere by doing justice and disrupting racism. The transformational process of readiness 360 to create more vital congregations 
resources for engaging the young adults on college campuses, elevating lay leaders in your congregation through multiple avenues of training and empowerment, reaching new people for Jesus Christ through fresh expressions, developing class meetings through devotion, worship, acts of mercy, and seeking justice, trainings and resources to prepare and respond to crisis and disaster in your community through disaster response, development of conference-wide children and youth strategy, support, and programming, diagnostic and development for every size congregation available through greatness profile. Finally, you'll hear about the opportunities available to every Great Plains adult, youth, and child through camping ministry. I serve as part of the appointive cabinet to work with DSs on strategy for new church development as well. The Great Plains New Church Development vision is to create new, great new leaders, great new churches, <clears throat> and great new disciples for the transformation of the world. This alignment with the GP vision allows us to focus on key aspects of church planting around great planter leadership that rises from great churches that flows into the development of new churches, thus transforming that community. In this liminal time in the world and church history, equipping leaders to undertake new and innovative ways to invite all people to new life in Jesus Christ is paramount. Even in this challenging time, the apostolic call of disciples of Jesus Christ is to invite new people to new life in Christ. We remember the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit attested to in Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. For the past seven years, New Church Development has invited clergy and lay people 
to participate in a, a planter incubator, which allows participants to discern a call, learn planting competencies, and be challenged with developing actions and plans to be planters where they are. This opportunity will start this fall, and I encourage you to nominate yourself to your DS. You will garner inspiration, tools, and coaching to develop your own way forward to reach new people for Jesus Christ. This year, we are partnering with Path One New Starts of the Discipleship Ministries and Epicenter Coaching to offer the first of its kind innovation coach cohort for those who have completed the planter incubator and have a plan approved for funding through new church development. New church development looks to continue to empower church development in every area of the Great Plains, whether it is through fresh expressions, new church starts, and satellite campuses of existing churches. We also believe the time is now to plant churches with an eye on the future of vitalization, planting, and discipleship in the U.S. Over half of the new church starts in the Great Plains over the past eight years have been to create Latinx communities, African American communities, and global plants for Congolese immigrants and others. I am deeply proud of this work to be prophetic and apostolic. I believe John Wesley organized for discipleship through class meeting. He also went into the world, preached and taught the good news of Jesus Christ wherever and whenever he could. I invite you to be courageous in this time and hold to the promise that no matter where you are, God has blessed you with all you need to bless your community. Congregational excellence is here for you to walk with you as you find your way. God bless you as you hear these resources today. Hi. My name is Melissa Getford and I serve as the Intergenerational Discipleship Coordinator. And together, we make up the Congregational Excellence Team of the Great Plains Conference. 
We are on the adventure to resource the Great Plains mission field by identifying, stewarding, and deploying resources to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Along with clergy excellence, we are responsible for developing great churches, great leaders, and great disciples in Kansas and Nebraska. If you are interested in reaching new people, helping your congregations grow deeper, and making a difference in your community, we invite you to reach out to your district superintendent to see how we can support you, or you can reach out directly to us. As the Intergenerational Discipleship Coordinator, I serve as the chief resourcer and connector for youth workers and kids ministry workers in the conference. I deploy training resources, curriculum, and kids, youth, and family initiatives. My pr primary role is to help ministry leaders develop healthy and sustainable discipleship systems. I also serve as the adult sponsor for the Conference Council of Youth Ministries, or CCYM, which is a servant leadership development opportunity during the school year for high schoolers. They serve as leaders in the conference by supporting local youth ministry and advocating for young people in Kansas and Nebraska. We recently signed a two-year contract with Ministry Architects, a leading consulting firm to help churches and conferences build and create sustainable ministry systems for kids and youth. This contract includes a conference-wide kids and youth ministry assessment, coaching, cohort training, a vision summit, equipping events, and workshops. We have a fantastic team of our conference's own kids and youth ministry leaders working alongside ministry architects to design a sustainable structure for conference-level youth and kids ministry. I am so grateful for this opportunity and the timing of this partnership. We all know that ministry looks so different, especially in the coming years, and to have ministry architects' expertise in reimagining what that will look like is a blessing that will have incredible impact in our churches and communities. Part of that reimagining includes releasing a year-long discipleship plan for young people and their families, beginning with some initiatives to take place in August as a back-to-school kickoff. We recognize that during this COVID season, much of kids and youth ministry has become equipping adults to be the primary faith formers in the home. And this has been the goal of Next Generation Ministries from the beginning. So what a beautiful opportunity that churches have to resource adults to immerse the next generation in spiritual disciplines. We also recognize that pastors and ministry leaders are working as hard as you can to remain adaptive and flexible which is why we want to resource you. This plan is comprehensive for families to use in their homes throughout the school year. It's complete with blessings from the bishop, timely and seasonal activities, and social media initiatives that grow young disciples. We will release the material monthly through conference communications and social media, and I invite you to share these resources with the families in your church and your community. Since 2014, the Great Plains United Methodist Conference has operated under the vision, Great Leaders, Great Churches, Great Disciples, Transformed World. Since the unification of Kansas East, Kansas West, and Nebraska Annual Conferences, we have leaned on this vision while developing new ways to remain and become vital for our communities. As time moves on, the Great Plains continues to reach towards this vision, and the question has remained for us. How do we help churches live this vision out on the ground? In response to this question, the executive team made up of conference directors developed the vision of the Great Plains into a set of profiles from which local congregations and their leadership can find helpful guidance and resources. We call them greatness profiles. Based off of conversations with clergy and laity from all church sizes and contexts in our conference, the greatness profiles clarify what it means to be great leaders, great churches, and great disciples, no matter where you are or what size church you are in in the conference. All conference departments are collaborating to organize, curate, and create resources that fit into these profiles so that local churches have direction and clarity while growing in greatness. For more information on greatness profiles, you can visit the Great Plains website. 
In our rapidly changing political, social, and religious landscape, the United Methodist Church and the Great Plains Conference is uniquely positioned to share the Wesleyan articulation of the faith in creative and innovative ways as we equip local churches and people of all stages for discipleship and greatness. It's a blessing to serve as the Intergenerational Discipleship Coordinator for the conference, and I invite you to get connected through the Great Plains Discipleship Facebook group, which has served as a catalyst for peer learning and crowdsourcing some great resources for discipleship ministries. Youth workers can also sign up for a monthly e-newsletter on the website, and a kids ministry e-newsletter is in the works for the upcoming year. Please don't hesitate to reach out to get connected with discipleship opportunities and resources. You can email me at mgepford at greatplainsumc.org. Blessings in your ministry. The heart of any church is its laity. Pastors come and go from congregations, but the laity are present in many of our churches for generations at a time. With more than 210,000 lay people involved in our United Methodist churches across Nebraska and Kansas, we have a tremendous potential to harvest the gifts and graces of the people in our pews and put those skills to work for God in the world today. One avenue for building those skills is the work of lay servant ministries. This group of lay people provide basic training and advanced training opportunities on numerous aspects of ministries. These lay servants serve in myriad capacities in the local churches and help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not just to people in their congregations, but to people beyond the walls of the local church. Here to introduce the many aspects of lay ministry in the Great Plains Conference is Shane Warta. Hi, I'm Shane Warta, and I serve as coordinator of lay leadership development. Hi. I am Shane Warda, and I serve as the coordinator of Lay Leadership Development. And together, we make up the Congregational Excellence Team of the Great Plains Conference. We are on the adventure to resource the Great Plains mission field by identifying, stewarding, and deploying resources to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are responsible for developing great churches, great leaders, and great disciples in Kansas and Nebraska. If you are interested in reaching new people, helping your congregations grow deeper, and making a difference in your community, we invite you to reach out to your district superintendent first to see how we can help you. You can reach out to me directly at swarda at greatplainsumc.org. I believe that laity have the most potential to make the greatest impact on the most people. My dream is that through Jesus, our leadership can take people where they need to go. My hope is that laity are equipped for the mission field. Methodism originally is a lay movement that is outward and empowering. As a fellow layperson, I feel our call process starts with discipleship, and through our spiritual development, we discover our leadership capacity. As a part of my role, I get the opportunity to support lay servant ministries. This is a practical training ground for leadership discernment, and developing tools for caring, communicating, and leading. Look at it as a leadership development program focused on equipping and empowering lay persons in roles such as certified lay servant, serving the local church, certified lay speaker, preaching the word, and certified lay minister appointed as a part of the ministry team. As of now, we have approximately 25 certified lay ministers conference-wide and over 800 certified servants and speakers. Impactful leadership is on display all throughout Kansas and Nebraska. There are 17 district directors making up the conference committee for lay servant ministries. Their leadership helps oversee the flock by reviewing trainings, facilitating courses, and developing missional strategies for their district. For clergy and laity, they are a helping point person that can walk alongside individuals and help advance lay ministry. Lay servant ministry training is a part of the local church DNA and network planning district trainings partnerships that support and come together to provide basic courses and lay advanced courses. The ministry offers a variety of online courses such as preaching, missions, social justice, New Testament, Old Testament, fresh expressions, and worship, to name a few. 
A primary resource that can be accessed is the Lay Servant Ministries guidebook, which is located on the Great Plains website under the Laity tab. This document includes more detail and helpful guiding checklists. The guidebook will have all the forms necessary for certification. If you are a pastor, please insert yourself in the individual's journey towards empowerment and be a permission giver. For further information and or to set up a training session, contact your district director of Lay Servant Ministries by going to the contacts page at www.greatplainsumc backslash lady. Another component within my coordination is tracking with lay leaders and lay members. All our key roles in leaking the vision and plan of a congregation with the ministry of the annual conference and in nurturing pastor lady partnerships. These two roles are complementary, yet there are responsibilities unique to each role. The lay leader has a primary focus in linking the local church and the community, and the lay member of the annual conference has a primary focus in linking the local church to the connectional United Methodist Church and God's worldwide church. In partnership, Lay Servant Ministries of the Great Plains Conference makes available training specific for lay leaders, either local church or district lay leaders, and also all lay persons interested in nurturing leadership skills. The training can also be expanded to include other topics such as church council, finance, trustees, outreach, and many others. The expanded topic booklets are available from www.beadisciple.com. Brand new this past year with over 400 people participating and taking place again this year is the Lady Summit. Mark your calendar for Saturday, March 20th, 2021. The mission of the Lady Summit is to provide laypersons of the Great Plains Conference a gathering that is accessible, affordable, and relevant that revol results in a more powerful dynamic in making disciples for the transformation of the world. The purpose of the Lady Summit is to help meet the following goals. The skill of identifying potential leaders and cultivating them to leadership roles, strengthening partnership with clergy and laity, exploring one's own personal spiritual life and practice, and learning to strengthen their own leadership and discipleship making skills. The leadership in our conference is here to help you build your church resume. Please reach out to me, Mary Fight, Director of Lay Servant Ministries, and Lisa Moppin, Conference Lay Leader, both residing in Blue River District. We are constantly striving to create a culture of continuous leadership development and align the pathway for all laity. I'd like to switch gears and talk about fresh expressions. This is an area that I'm passionate about. It's something new, but at the same time, it's not. It's making disciples in a changing culture. We have been talking about and starting fresh expressions in our conference for a couple years now. Lady are key pioneers and contributors of fresh expressions in reaching people. No training or experience required. This flows out of church mission, congregational vision, and personal calling. As we begin to shift from inward to outward, we see there are more mission fields arising everywhere where there are people who desire to grow and be a part of church. Fresh Expressions is a form of church for our changing culture established primarily for the benefit of people who are not yet a part of any church. At its heart, Fresh Expressions is about two things. Proclaiming that established churches have a critical, if not central, role in God's mission in our time and empowering and equipping God's people in every congregation to develop creative ways to reach the increasing diversity of our society. A true movement of God begins with a sense of awe and wonder. So let us wonder, where are the people we want to reach? Who are they? How do we work outside the walls of the church in partnership with the church to do so? To go a little deeper, Fresh Expressions is a group of people who share a similar interest, hobby, or meeting place, and often meet in homes, neighborhoods, gathering spots, and more commonly now, outside or online. In the Great Plains Conference, I've heard and seen fresh expressions gathering in restaurants, pubs, libraries, hair salons, pharmacies, lakes, laundromats, or even around a sport. There are a lot of possibilities, so check out the Great Plains website for learning, pathways, images, and ideas for following the movement of the Holy Spirit. There, you can apply for a Fresh Expressions grant. The conference has supported each one of those previous examples I shared, 
and the Vital Congregations Conference Board has more seed money grants available. Don't forget to access training videos to the Congregational Excellence Office and look for an upcoming training called New Kind of Local Church Vision Day coming this fall. I feel lay leadership development starts within the local church where leaders are equipped, innovative ministries are birthed, and congregations are empowered in their disciple-making ventures. Join us and together we can honor the past, live in the current, and look towards the future. As I close, I'm reminded of when Jesus was teaching on prayer. We see in Luke chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, Jesus says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be open. God has already provided you with all that you need, and God wants your ministry to be fruitful. Blessings to you as we journey together. The Congregational Excellence Team is offering an opportunity to learn where your congregation truly is in its ministry, what the hopes and dreams are in your congregation, and then coaching to help you achieve your goals. Known as Readiness 360, this is a free survey-based process. It's already been paid for by the faithful payment of mission shares by your church and other churches. Another conference emphasis is on campus ministries. This engagement with young adults helps solidify their faith, learn to be leaders in faith, and start their adult lives as true disciples of Jesus Christ. Here is the Reverend Nicole Conard, our coordinator of Young Adult Leadership. Hi, I'm Nicole Conard, and I serve as the Campus Ministry and Young Adults Coordinator. And together, we make up the Congregational Excellence Team of the Great Plains Conference. We are on the adventure to resource the Great Plains Mission Field by identifying, stewarding, and deploying resources to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Together with the rest of the Great Plains Conference staff, we are responsible for developing great churches, and great leaders, and great disciples in Kansas and Nebraska. So if you are interested in reaching new people, helping your congregations grow deeper, and making a difference in your community, we invite you to reach out to your district superintendent first to see how we can help you. One of the free resources available for church is the Readiness 360 survey. This is a survey for the congregation to take to gain a snapshot on where the congregation is on taking the next faithful steps in mission and ministry. It's not another program. It is taking the input from the people in the church and then gathering that input providing a starting point with data, and coaching for what God wants to do next with the congregation, and then hearing all along how the Holy Spirit guides on the next steps in ministry. The survey measures four areas in the congregation that are found in churches that multiply their ministry well. And these areas are spiritual intensity, missional alignment, dynamic relationships, and cultural openness. And there's also an overall aggregate data that can help name where a congregation currently is, and the church leadership can choose two open-ended questions to offer while taking the time to do this congregational survey. The survey is free of charge through 2021 to all Great Plains churches, and it's online, so it can be easily emailed and connected with the congregation electronically. Of course, a church can offer special accommodations to those who prefer paper copies. After a congregation takes the survey, three reports are given to the leadership team from that church. And the leadership team would meet with a coach for free to help interpret the results and then coach through those next steps, all the while while listening to God's voice in the process. And these coaches are our specially trained laity and clergy in our districts. All of this is made possible by your mission shares. So feel free to contact your network leader or district superintendent to get access to your survey code and hear the God-given strengths and the faithful discernment of what is happening and where God is calling your congregation into a future with hope. 
Methodists started when John and Charles Wesley and a few of their friends gathered together in a holy club at Oxford University. The club met to discuss religious concerns and to help each other lead disciplined, methodical lives of worship and study and service. And because of their method, other students called them Methodists. So 200 years later, the United Methodist Church is still on campuses with the opportunities to invite students to gather and worship, service, study, and fellowship. United Methodist schools and campus ministries are about offering grace, acknowledging that all students are on the journey of faith and that God goes before them and calls every person by name. Each person is already a child of God and as they decide to follow Christ so that they can love God and love neighbor in all that they do. There's a deep desire for every college student to know this all-encompassing love of God through Christ, no matter where they are on their journey of faith. Campus ministry is about empowering students to live transformed lives. It is about inviting and equipping and then sending students to be leaders in the faith, acknowledging that each student has God-given gifts and graces to use for Christ in the world. Campus ministry helps students know their leadership gifts and use them in the community with one another and on campus. The campus ministry is a missional outpost to the campus. And colleges are these mini towns with residents who have their own language and rules and values. And our campus ministers, just like any missionary, must learn this culture in order to minister to this mini town. Also, just like a missionary, our campus ministries are supported by your mission shares and also raise money in order to support themselves. You support a portion of their budgets and everything else from volunteer hours and building needs and ministerial funds come from generous partners who understand the importance of campus ministry with college students and young leaders. We have four United Methodist Colleges in the Great Plains. Nebraska Wesleyan University, Kansas Wesleyan University, Baker University, and Southwestern College. And we have 10 campus ministries at state schools, including the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, University of Nebraska-Omaha, University of nebraska Kearney, University of Kansas, Kansas State, Emporia State, Fort Hayes State, Washburn University, Wichita State, and Pittsburgh State. So I invite you to connect with these campus ministries with your prayers and presence and gifts and service who are the United Methodist Church on campus, connecting students, leaders, and people who embrace this extension of our local church, reminding us how we began, and reaching students and young adults and leaders in this generation. Our Methodist heritage firmly took root as a movement during earlier times through the gathering of class meetings. These small groups of people met faithfully to lift each other up, to provide accountability, and to walk together along our Christian journeys. The Reverend Holly Tapley tells us more about class meetings and the important role of class leaders. After that, she will share how we can care for people who are struggling after disaster strikes. As our coordinator of disaster response in Nebraska and Kansas, Holly has comforted people after a tornado, cleaned up muck in homes after floods, and directed efforts to bring compassion to people who have experienced different forms of trauma. Watch and listen as Holly explains ways that you can help. Hi, I'm Holly Tapley and I serve as a disaster response coordinator. And together we make up the Congregational Excellence Team of the Great Plains Conference. We're on the adventure to resource the Great Plains mission field by identifying, stewarding, and deploying resources to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We're responsible for developing great churches, great leaders, and great disciples in Kansas and Nebraska. If you are interested in reaching new people, helping your congregations grow deeper, and making a difference in your community, we invite you to reach out to your district superintendent first to see how they can help you, or you can reach out to me at my email address, which is htapley at greatplainsumc.org. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, 
provides us with a system of care for one another. Let's also think about how to motivate each other to show love and to do good works. Don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gotten into the habit of doing. Instead, encourage each other, especially as you see the day drawing near. As United Methodists, one of the most powerful movements that we can boast about is the Methodist class system. The early Methodists offered three types of groups in addition to, to the worship attendance. Societies were the highest or the largest of the three groups organized in particular locales for instruction and preaching. Classes became the basic subdivision of the societies, with each class having 12 individuals. And bands were more of an intimate group of five individuals, and they met for accountability in their personal faith journey. These meetings were a powerful time of support and encouragement for individuals as they walked along with God in their daily lives. The Great Plains Conference recognizes laity and your role in making disciples for the transformation of the world. We recognize that many of our laity are gifted in the role of leading and guiding others for spiritual transformation. And one of the avenues to use your gifts is in the form of the Methodist class meeting in your houses of worship and community. The class leader is a lay person who has the desire and the calling to encourage and strengthen other laity in living out their faith and Christian witness through devotion, worship, and acts of compassion and justice. There are multiple avenues to incorporate the Methodist class meeting movement in your house of worship. One way is, is, is establishing this ministry uh, opportunity for groups of 12 to connect, to grow, and to journey together in their spiritual walk through accountability, study, worship, generosity, service, and witness. Another avenue is for a house of worship to move into a time of discernment on what God is calling the congregation to do next. It is an intentional time listening and sensing the movement of the Holy Spirit. One more possible movement can be for houses of worship who are struggling to maintain financially and supporting clergy and other ministry opportunities. Maybe your community of faith has discerned already that clergy and other ministries cannot be maintained. So in both situations, you can use a form of the Methodist class while maintaining community, study, worship, generosity, service, and witness. The Methodist class is a connection for all. It brings us together as we keep our promise to do all in our power to increase our faith, confirm our hope, and perfect ourselves in love. The Great Plains Conference Disaster Response Ministry is guided by the words of Matthew 9, 36. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were troubled and helpless. Our ministry has theological material, mental health, advocacy, and social service components designed to provide for the spiritual, emotional, and physical recovery of a disaster. When a disaster happens, we must be invited into a community by local officials, and usually it's by the emergency manager. We do not self-deploy, yet we wait for that invitation so that we will know exactly what is needed and where. Some emergency managers have asked us to do particular jobs for them 
immediately following a disaster. And that way our volunteers know what we will be doing prior to even leaving home. The job may and often does change, yet that is the nature of relief and recovery. Volunteers pay for their own expenses when they respond to their biblical call to serve. I do attempt to work with community officials and houses of worship leaders in the community where we are responding to seek free housing and to have as many meals covered as possible. And volunteers are encouraged to carpool so that will also help with the expense of gasoline. Our volunteers are respected and have a great reputation in many counties within the Great Plains. And emergency managers know that they can count on us to follow their guidance and to do a great job. We have MOUs, or a Memorandum of Understanding, with 11 emergency managers, counties, and cities within the Great Plains Conference. These MOUs with these parties unifies and expedites the relief phase after a disaster has occurred. Another part of our ministry that happens because of the great individuals and houses of worship in our conference is the ability to provide financial grant assistance to those who have experienced a disaster. There are some stipulations on what these funds can be used for, yet our conference disaster response team truly has hearts of compassion. The grant request forms are available on the disaster response page of the conference website. Not only do we respond in times of disasters, yet during the blue skies time, when there are no disasters. We encourage every house of worship to host one of or more of our training opportunities for your congregation and for the community. These trainings, except for the early response, is free. So the trainings and the resources that are available to you the basic disaster 101 which is just an overview of what a disaster is it we go through the levels of disaster and how we can respond per level and we also talk about how anyone can be involved in this ministry the early response training or the ERTs respond after a disaster when the scene has been deemed safe and after an invitation from the emergency manager and our local officials to begin work in the relief phase. This phase usually begins within 24 hours from when the disaster hit. Work done during this time is but yet not limited to disaster damage assessments, volunteer management, debris removal, the tarping of roofs and windows, and cleaning out homes after a flood. ERTs are required to complete and pass an eight-hour UNCOR training and two background checks. And the cost of this training is $25 per person, which covers the training materials, your UNCOR and your Great Plains badge, in your lime green team shirt. We know that disasters are common in the Great Plains Conference, and this training is the one that every house of worship needs. There are three modules. Module one is Ready Congregate, where families and individuals do disaster preparation for themselves. Module two is Ready Church, and in this training, we look at the facilities and the design, and we, then we design and formulate a disaster preparation plan for before, during, and after a disaster. Module three is ready response. The house of worship is our first 
eyes and ears following a disaster. What you see and hear as you walk about the community will provide us and local officials with much needed information. During the active shooter awareness training, we focus on the run, hide, fight method presented by Homeland Security. Situational awareness is discussed along with radical hospitality as a way of becoming Christ-like in a difficult moment. In this relatively new training of until help arrives, it encourages and teaches us how to be the first step in the line of medical attention for someone who has been severely injured. This course presents methods on how to stop an open bleed, position an injured person, and provide comfort until official medical help arrives. Survival counts on the first person to extend a helping hand. The National Flood Insurance is a self-guided PowerPoint highlighting the advantages of homeowner flood insurance. The resource tells you what is covered and not covered and provides guidance on how to select the insurance. Security and the safety assessment is a tool using assessment tools from Homeland Security, from FEMA, and from Church Mutual. It is an inside and an outside site survey of your facility, and the materials are left behind with you for your leadership to study and to provide ongoing guidance for protecting individuals in your facility at all time. Clergy and congregational guidance for your COVID questions. From what takes place in your county, in your state, from the CDC, from John Hopkins, both governor's offices, both state departments of health, and both state departments of emergency management. I am staying on top of the why and the what and the when. Just like the Methodist class meetings, disaster response is a powerful movement where all are encouraged in the words of John Wesley to do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. As Christians, mercy and justice are essential components to our ministries. Micah 6.8 teaches, He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Together we seek to walk alongside those needing expressions of mercy in their lives, and our Great Plains Conference initiatives emphasize areas such as education, poverty, immigration, food insufficiencies, and mental health. We follow the scriptural instructions by providing leadership in our local churches for people to be actively involved in seeking justice for the marginalized and the voiceless in our society. This might look different from one community to the next, but what is common in all circumstances is that we seek to come alongside those who are being cast aside or held down in our society and doing what is necessary to end systemic barriers that prevent them from achieving equity in our society. Here now is the Reverend Dr. Kalaba Chali, our Mercy and Justice Coordinator, to share the ways that we pursue Mercy and Justice Ministries in the Great Plains Conference. Hi, my name is Kalaba Chali. I serve as the Mercy and Justice Coordinator, and together, we make up the Congregational Excellence Team of the Great Plains Conference. We are on the adventure to resource the Great Plains mission field by identifying, stewarding, and deploying resources to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Along with clergy excellence, we are responsible for developing great churches, great leaders, 
and great disciples in Kansas and Nebraska. If you're interested in reaching new people, help your congregations grow deeper, and making a difference in your community, we invite you to reach out to your district superintendent to see how we can support you. Within Congregational Excellence, the Mercy and Justice team exists to equip and empower local churches in the work of mercy and justice ministries as we work together to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Of paramount importance to the mercy and justice work is its two mission fold, the mercy work and justice work. What is the difference between mercy and justice? Mercy, from Hebrew word resed, is about individual act, loving kindness intended to stop the bleeding at an individual level. Emphasis is on one's attitude in helping. Justice, on the other hand, from its Hebrew root, mishpat, is about equitable way of ordering society, negotiating systemic changes. Here, emphasis is on action. Under the leadership of Bishop Ruben Sines, uh, the Great Plains Annual Conference is focused on four themes. Love God in 2017, Proclaim Christ 2018, Serve Others 2019, and Seek Justice for 2020. Doing Justice Initiative is part of the 2020 Annual Conference theme. Rationale for doing justice initiative. As a conference, we have been faithfully engaging in doing ministries of mercy in Kansas, Nebraska, and beyond. Because doing ministries of justice requires collaboration and collective efforts in general, churches hardly act on, call, on God's call to do justice. The scope of our doing justice initiative. Doing Justice Initiative is a local Great Plains Conference vision to engage our mission field, to leave out the call from Micah 6.8, to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. Our conference is working in partnership with two justice organizations. The first one, Direct Action and Research Training, DART, and the second one, Western Organization of Resource Councils, work so that we support justice initiatives in rural, semi-rural, and urban areas of our conference. Justice work is founded in biblical vision for doing justice work. Biblically defined, Justice is people of faith standing together in unison for broad-scale systemic change with and on behalf of the widow, the orphan, the poor, the oppressed, the stranger. Examples, the Exodus story, Nehemiah 5, or the Jesus Christ story in the time of oppression in the Roman Empire. An example from the contemporary uh, uh, context, a coalition of churches, a mosque, and a synagogue known as Justice Matters in Lawrence, Kansas, stops a $123 million jail expansion and instead establishing the will to fund a 24-7 mental health and an addiction services campus. Justice work gives us a lot of opportunities. One, doing justice ministry involves the work of building trusting relationships within and beyond the church, recognizing that there are many uh, public policies at local levels that bring us together, that separate us. For instance, access to food, uh, mental health, and, uh, and many more evaluating the cost and benefit analysis of entering the public arena where decisions that impact our peoples and our neighborhoods are determined. So I want to talk about the racial justice resources that we have put together. The goal of anti-racism resources listed on our conference website is to help 
individuals and churches to understand what it means to live out our Christian call as anti-racist disciples and churches. This unfolds both at a personal level as well as collectively. Coaching approach to justice work. At the core of coaching is the belief that the person being coached has the capacity to discover insights that make progress on specific issues. For this reason, as I've been reading and reflecting on engaging in anti-racism work, I think in particular in our context, one is likely to make progress when leading the work of anti-racism through a coaching approach than approaches that focus on experts offering directive information about interrupting racist, uh, racist behaviors. While it is important to understand how racism plays out, it is equally crucial that we guide those who reject racism with tangible language, techniques, and individual actions to interrupt it. Offering people tangible things to do to interrupt racism creates space where many could begin to make progress in living out our anti-racist discipleship call. On dismantling systemic racism, our individual actions of interrupting racist behaviors will lead us to join together to engage in systemic change, which is required to dismantle systemic racism. This is the work of our collective efforts, white, black, and brown persons all working together to build a society where all people's dignity and humanity are celebrated. Resources available on our website. In our conference website, under the Mercy and Justice, Racial Justice, slash Learning to be Interracist, Congregational Excellence Department has curated learning resources to support the work of lay and clergy leaders. We all need to remember that the work of justice is a lifelong work of making progress to become the beloved community God has called all of us to be. Thus, engaging in the anti-racist work is not about completing a degree joining a protest or attending a seminar, but a journey of holding ourselves accountable for measurable transformative changes within our society as we usher in God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. I am grateful, my friends, for the opportunity to walk alongside all of you as we continue to grow and transform our communities through Christian witness and justice. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions about uh, these resources or if you have ideas you wish to share with others. My email is kchali at greatplainsumc.org. God bless you in your leadership and your witness. Thank you. Camping ministry has changed the lives of numerous people over the years. The Great Plains has five campsites that allow for youth camps, retreats, and special events. Because camps can seem remote, sometimes we forget to promote the idea among our children and youth. But the reality is our camps are located in such great positions across our two states that nobody is too far away from a campsite to participate. Besides fun, Camps provide children and youth a chance to unplug, commune with nature, interact with other children and youth their age, and form a firm foundation for their faith development under the supervision of caring counselors who love Jesus Christ and care deeply about the spiritual health and wellness of your children and youth. Listen now to Sarah Shaw, our camping ministry coordinator, to learn more about how camp can play a big role in the faith journey for our children and our youth. Hi, I am Sarah Shaw, and I serve as the Camping Ministries Coordinator for the Great Plains Conference. 
and together we make up the Congregational Excellence Team of the Great Plains. We are on the adventure to resource the Great Plains mission field by identifying, stewarding, and deploying resources to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are responsible for developing great churches, great leaders, and great disciples in Kansas and Nebraska. If you are interested in reaching new people, helping your congregation grow deeper, and making a difference in your community, we invite you to reach out to your district superintendent first to see how we can help you. Or you can reach out to me directly via email. There are five Great Plains camps in our conference, two in Nebraska and three in Kansas. No matter where you are in our conference, you are at the most three and a half to four hours away from a Great Plains camp. GP camps not only offer summer camp, they offer a safe and sacred space for you to hold a retreat, volunteer, camp out, plan a family weekend to rent out a cabin, a relaxing day trip to hike and enjoy God's creation, host a birthday party, provide a great wedding venue, host a church picnic, a perfect spot for pastors to retreat, reflect and renew, and so much more. I encourage you to reach out to one of our camp directors to learn more about how camping ministries can serve you. You'll find the link to all of them on our website. But today, I want to talk to you about why church camp is so important. First, because church camp is joyful fun. It is a sacred place where campers are profoundly impacted spiritually and relationally through their time at camp. Overall, I think about how God shows up during this week and how he impacts generations through summer camp. Church camp is different from other congregations year-round faith formation efforts like Vacation Bible School or Sunday School. Campers and leaders live, work, play, and worship together from early morning until late in the evening. They grow together through shared experiences in God's amazing creation and from an intentional community. They hear our faith stories in new places and in new ways and find opportunities to share their own. The activities are fun, challenging, and filled with opportunities to grow as part of a Christian community. We need a time for our children and students to get away from all the distractions of life to truly engage with God as well with one another. There is so much noise in kids' lives today and in ours as well. God says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. It is amazing how a week of concentrated time impacts your long-term development. This is why there are soccer camps, basketball camps, reading camps, academic camps, and cheerleading camps, and so much more in the summer. This week catapults you forward. It is why colleges and even professional teams have mini camps. Spiritually, our kids need this time to mature, being in God's word, establishing the discipline of a quiet time with the Lord each day. Being around godly friends and worshiping are all foundational life principles that kids learn at camp. The decisions that are made at summer camp impact us for the rest of our lives. Long after kids give up playing competitive soccer and cheerleading, which mostly only lasts through high school, being a Christ follower and who they are as a person, their character, remains with them for their whole life. I encourage you to make sure that summer church camp is a priority for your kids. They need a strong spiritual foundation to last them throughout their lives. It is the Lord who will be with us through it all, the good, the bad, the joys, and the struggles. Our kids need summer church camp for the long-term impact. I am sharing this as a first-hand experience. Camp is where I found Christ for the first time. Camp is where I made a commitment to be part of camping ministries for life. Camp is where I raised my children, and now my daughter is serving in camping ministries, changing one life at a time with Christ and camp. We've learned a lot today about many of the Great Plains Annual Conference resources. These are available for our churches regarding the numerous aspects of ministry. Our Congregational Excellence team wants to help us in our churches. 
to be as successful as we can be in fulfilling our critically important mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Again, I am the Reverend Dr. Nancy Tomlinson, Superintendent of the Blue River District and the central portion of the Elkhorn Valley District. I've been joined by Reverend Lance Clay, the Superintendent of the Prairie Rivers District and the western part of the Elkhorn Valley District. We hope you found this information useful. Each presenter's video will be available within the next few days on the conference website at www.greatplainsumc.org. You can watch them again or just scan them to pick up points you might have missed the first time around. We want to thank you for your time and your attention as we have shown you many ways the Great Plains Conference is here to assist you in your ministry. And if you have any questions and would like to know more about these programs available through the Congregational Excellence Team, contact myself or Reverend Dr. Nancy Tomlinson in their district offices and we'll help you. It's, it's our prayer that God bless your ministries across the Great Plains Conference. Now to wrap up our time together, here again is the Reverend Nathan Stanton, the Director of Congregational Excellence. So you have heard the resources and the people available to you. The churches of the Great Plains to be laborers in your mission field the faith, resources, and courageous leadership it is taking to move through this time is a leadership that continues to move forward even when the final destination remains hidden. You am pastor and well-known church development consultant, Gil Rendell, offers a story from his book, Quietly Courageous, to encourage disciples serving in every role of the church to encourage them to take the next steps in their leadership is about a very young boy living on a farm who was instructed by his mother to go out on a pitch dark night to check if the barn door was closed and locked. The young boy left through the kitchen door and returned in less than a minute. When asked what was wrong, the boy replied that it was too dark to see where the barn was, and he was afraid to walk out where he could not see. His mother handed him a flashlight and told him to try again. But once again, he returned in less than a minute, explaining that the flashlight was too weak and he still couldn't see the barn. You don't need to see the barn, responded his mother. Just walk to the end of the light. 
the insight in the story is that by walking to the end of the line, more of the path ahead is exposed. Thanks for your leadership and your courageous faith in this time. We are here to walk with you, even if it is only to the end of the line together. God bless.